Yo, what's good, YouTube? It's your boy, MG Nas, and I'm back and get with another NFL predictions video on today, man. Before we get into this video, I want y'all to hit that like, share, comment, and subscribe to the channel as we're on the road to 100 subscribers. We are currently at 89, so I would appreciate if y'all hit the like button, hit the subscribe, and share, and, um... Hit the notification bell because you don't want to hit, you don't want to miss any content for live streams or any other videos coming out. And we back at the setup, we're back home, we back in the usual setup. Um, and today, as y'all know, we got the NFC North predictions video. Now I got a couple of people I know from all four of these teams. Actually, three. I don't know anybody from the Lions really. But I got a couple, I know a lot of people in this division. So if they're watching this video, um, they're going to be really, some of them might be mad at me. Some of them might be happy. So without a further ado, let's get right into this video. So the NFC North, uh, this is a, um, this division is, it's not the, it's not the uh, most exciting division. It's not the most, uh, it's not the division everybody wants to see. It's not the division that, you know, it's not like the, uh, it's not the division with the most superstars or the most, you know, it, it, but one thing I will say about the division, this division is real and when the, when the rivalries in this division always, it, it never disappoints. When these teams face up like the Bears and Packers, the Lions and Bears, the Vikings and Lions, the Packers and Lions, you know their history with the Hail Marys and all that. When these teams play against each other, they always it's always good games. Like even the team like the Packers and Lions last year had two good games last year. And they finished one in the division, four in the division. That just goes to show you how good this division is when they play each other. But outside of the division, they're not like the outsiding team you want to watch. So we but we're gonna get into this. Um so, as y'all know, I always start with number four in the division, and I think this is a no-brainer, um, the Detroit Lions. Now, Lions fans, if you're watching this, I know, I know, I know, another disappointing losing season. But let me talk about your goods first. You have Matthew Stafford, who, if he stays healthy this year, he can be a 4,000-yard passer and a 30-touchdown guy. You got Kenny Galladay, who... Was really good last year, especially in fantasy. You got um, DeAndre Swift, who you drafted in the second round. Good running back, top three in the running back in the draft class. You got, you still got a carry on Johnson, who, if he's healthy, he's not a top running back, but he 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 still he's still a pretty good running back. He's decent. He can get you some yards here and there. He can get you a couple of um. You know, third and short situations, he can get you in uh, some uh, goal line situations. So, you still got on Johnson and that. And then you got, uh, like I said, you got Matthew Stafford. You got Marvin Jones, who is a 800-yard receiver, about five touchdowns um, and, like, about 60 catches. His averages is usually every year. So, you got a consistent receiver there. But you're bad is on that offense is that offensive line is so garbage i mean and i, I know y'all got tj hawkinson too but you know he has to stay healthy also but that offensive line is so garbage uh y'all highest pay offensive line how how pull of um y'all paid him 10 million a year when when he, he was a backup with the eagles well not really a backup but he was like that guy who you re rotate him everywhere when guys are injured but he was not a primary starter on the offensive line so you just paid a, a basically a rotational guy ten million a year. Um, I don't even know anyone else on your offensive line, so that just goes to show how bad your own line is. And then your defense is meh. It's all right. I mean, you got uh what Darius Slay. Uh, I'm mean, sorry. No, you traded away Darius Slay to my Eagles, but you drafted Jeff Okuda, the best corner in the draft. Um, y'all went younger as far as corner. Um. As far as y'all D-line, y'all don't have Snacks Harrison anymore. Y'all linebacking core is meh. It's all right. Um, you do have Trey Flowers coming off the edge for y'all. So y'all got um 
y'all got some goods, y'all got some bads, um, and y'all safeties, y'all traded away Quandre Diggs last year, y'all just giving away all these guys, like, all these guys I'm naming, y'all just trading away or just letting them go on the defense, and I think y'all gonna finish fourth, your record will be six and ten, um, and yeah, let's get into the third place team, and, uh, uh, I'm gonna. I'm before I announce this team. Somebody I know very well did a diss track on his own team and a third place team. It might be a shocker, but the Minnesota Vikings will finish third in the division at nine and seven this year. Yes, I have said it, people. The Minnesota Vikings have. They will lose the division. They will go third place at nine and seven. Um, let me. I'm. A, I'm gonna start. I'm gonna start with y'all. Bad. Um. First up, your offensive line is questionable. Uh, it looks like you're about to give up. You're about to release Riley Reef. Uh, Kirk Cousins. Yeah, huh, yeah, yeah. I guess it's Kirk Cousins. Is it Kirk Cousins? Is Kirk Cousins? Uh, you got what? You you did sign in Gakwe, but your corners are questionable. Um. Your safeties, y'all still got Harrison Smith uh, back there. He's getting old. Your, like I said, your D-line is all right at best. Um, your receiving core, you got Adam Thielen and Justin Jefferson. Uh, meh. Y'all, obviously, I got Dalvin Cook. Uh, Dalvin Cook, like I said, Dalvin Cook, he's a monster. Top 10 running back in the league. Probably top 5. Um, so... Y'all have talent, but I I can see the Packers sweeping y'all. The Bears, I can see them sweeping y'all for the third the third straight year in a row. And then on top of that, you still don't have a pretty easy schedule. So I just think that y'all um I just think y'all are gonna finish nine and seven. You know you you're still gonna win some games. Um, uh, you're gonna sweep the Lions and. You're still going to win a couple of games, but, you know, I just, I don't know, man. I, I, I'm i telling you right now, man, right now, the Minnesota Vikings will drop off. That playoff win against the Saints last year, I, 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 y'all got that. Y'all earned that win. I'm not taking it away from y'all, but I just have a funny feeling that the Minnesota Vikings will make a drop down and decline. Um, And that's why I have them third in the division. And that leads to my second place in the division. Uh, one of the greatest uh defensive teams ever, the Bears. Um, they have them finish second in the division, also at nine and seven. But I have them getting a tiebreaker over the Minnesota Vikings because they will have the better division record um than the Minnesota Vikings. So I have them um. I have the Bears, like I said, I have to get in the tiebreaker over the Vikings because they will have the better division record than the Vikings. So, um, the Bears, first off, I, I understand their uncertainty at quarterback. Um, but I'm telling y'all right now, David Montgomery, when he comes back, whenever he does, whether it's week one, week two, week three, or week four, Montgomery, if they run him the ball like they, sh like they should, Montgomery is going to be a problem in this league. You you can clip this, and if if he pops off for a thousand yards next year, I want y'all to come back to this video, and you know, and you got Allen Robinson who argue he he's a top ten receiver. I'll, I'll put I can sometimes I can put Allen Robinson maybe in the top eight. This guy is so underrated. He gets no credit and no love for what he does. Um. This man consistently every year with horrible quarterbacks has two a thousand yard seasons more than Devontae Adams. Um and Devontae Adams, some people call him a top five receiver, so he has more thousand yard years than Devontae Adams with horrible quarterbacks with Blake Bertles and Mitchell Trubisky and he doesn't just get enough credit. Um then you got um honest I understand, you know, Jimmy Graham, he's up there in age, he's still serviceable. Um, then you drafted, um, Cole Komet, one of the best, probably the best tight end in this year's draft. Um, if he can develop into what y'all want him to be, y'all can, uh, y'all have a future tight end right there. And then y'all have, uh, Anthony Miller, who, if he steps up this year, 
and he helps out whether your quarterback is Trubisky or Foles. If Anthony Miller steps up this year, y'all can have a um, y'all y'all will be good on that note. And and then y'all have Ted Ginn Jr. I know he's a veteran, but you know guys like Anthony Miller can learn from him and his experience. You know. And then on your defense, I mean, where do I even start with this stack defense? I mean, you got Eddie Jackson, Kyle Fuller. You got, um, Eddie, like I said, Eddie Jackson, Kyle Fuller. You got that linebacking core with Trevathan. You got uh, Roquan Smith. You got Khalil Mack, who is the best player, the leader, probably the best player on the team, the leader of the defense, the man in the middle, the king of the defense, all of that. You got Akeem Hicks, the man in the middle. He can play defensive tackle. He can play the edge rusher. Akeem Hicks is a baller. Then you got, um, I know Eddie Goldman opted out, but you got a guy who I think could have a solid year for Law, but Law Nichols, I know he's pretty young. Um, I, He can produce for y'all a little bit too. And y'all defense is just so good. Then y'all, um, Y'all drafted a quarterback. Y'all drafted Jalen Johnson this year. Uh, he's a top 10 quarterback in this past draft class. So y'all got Jalen Johnson, who is a stud, and he can be a great number two behind uh, Fuller this year for y'all. So, man, y'all really, y'all have a outstanding defense. Like I said, y'all got, and then y'all got Eddie Jackson back there, who is a top five safety. Then, like I said, that linebacking core with Roquan and, uh, Danny Trevathan, Khalil, then the D-line with Akeem Hicks, and you just got so many pieces everywhere on the defense. You, like, y'all can, y'all defense, y'all have that type of defense that, that that defense can win y'all eight games, and if you can get your offense to win you two, uh, a game, y'all could sneak into the playoffs at the sixth or seventh seed. And I just, you know what, I, I really like the Bears, especially on D this year. If they just stay healthy on defense and they can be an average offensive team, I just, like I said, they got a type of defense who can win them eight games. And if their offense can win a one or two, they can get into the playoffs. And that's just how I feel about the Chicago Bears. And your number one, the your number one, your number one uh team in the NFC North, um, the Cheeseheads, the Green Bay Cheeseheads. Where do I even start? Uh, Aaron Rodgers. You know he's a bad man. He's coming into his 14th season, I believe. Um, Aaron Rodgers, he, he's not the same. He's not how he used to be, but he's still a bad man. He's still a great quarterback, Hall of Fame quarterback. You got Devontae Adams, arguably a top five receiver. You got Aaron Jones, who went off last year, especially against the Dallas Cowgirls. Then you got uh, you got one of the best tackles in David Bakhtiari who he's a, a pro bowler, like I said, one of the best tackles in this game today. And then um, the my problem with y'all is y'all need y'all don't have a number two receiver. Uh, y'all just have Devontae, and y'all tight end is, is meh. Mercedes Lewis is not really a receiving tight end. He's more of a blocking guy. Um, so uh, the Packers, they have a lot of meh positions, like their tight end is meh. Their uh, linebacking core is mad, and I, I want to get to that defense too. You got uh, that defense is uh, is is very underrated. You got Jair Alexander and Kevin King. You got Adrian Amos and Darnell Savage. You got uh, Zadarius. You got the Smiths over there with Zadarius and Preston. You got uh, Kenny Clark, who y'all just paid. So your D line is outstanding. But my problem with y'all, y'all don't have a number two receiver. Y'all tight end is iffy, and y'all linebacking core. I mean, y'all got Christian Kirksey and everyone else on the linebacking court. And Christian Kirksey, he has to stay healthy in order for the Green Bay Packers to be successful. And if he doesn't do that, then I honestly, I don't know what to tell you. So, But I think y'all still win the division. Y'all win it at 10-6. and six. Y'all dropped three games from last year. Y'all went 13-3. and three. Probably the ugliest 13-3 and three I've ever seen in my life. But y'all will go 10-6 and six this year, though. And... That's the Packers, man. That's the NFC North. I appreciate y'all for watching. Um, if you drop down y'all predictions in a low for the NFC North uh, division, and um, make sure you hit that like, share, comment, subscribe. And like I said, I appreciate all of you for watching. 
We are on the road to 100 subscribers. We're currently at 89 at the time of this recording, so I appreciate y'all if y'all share it out to your friends, family, and sports fans around the world. The Underrated Tour continues, and it's your boy, MG Nas, and I'm out. Peace.